Once Upon a Time Unprompted Writing Podcast. Izzy takes Among Us into the office, Erin writes a mystery, Bella writes a swashbuckler, and special guest Alex writes, you guessed it, a very sensible story. This week's theme is how to write silliness, and our prompt is, I'm not being funny, but in her kitchen drawer, there's a tiny black phone. Bella, hit the theme tune. So this week we have special guest Alex. Alex, who are you? We've all forgotten you. Your fan base has just wow, you know, really? gone elsewhere really? This is my this is my fourth episode of, of Prompted, and everyone's forgotten me. That is that's heartbreaking, you know. Um, uh, but for vo- for those of you that have forgotten me, uh, I'm a third year English and creative writing student uh, from the University of Warwick. Hey, as are two more of us, I believe. As are all of us, <laughs> other than Erin. But Alex, my dad loves you and your writing well, thank you he hasn't forgotten me he keeps talking about your pieces i thought that was going somewhere else <laughs> alex my dad loves you and he wants to run away with you into the sunset well if you have a dad who loves me please feel free to uh, email me at uh, my email and... at, uh, i'm not my actually email? gonna put, i'm not actually gonna put that online <laughs> At alexsfans.co.uk. I'm not ready for fan mail yet. That's a lie. I'm always ready for fan mail. <laughs> yeah, we know. Aww. I'll get him to send you some. <laughs> so, yeah, this week's prompt is one about a little black phone. I heard it on the bus. There was a woman behind me who was on a conversation to someone and she was complaining about this other woman and her biggest insult was that this woman had a black phone in her kitchen drawer. So I think that's very mysterious because I have no idea what she's talking about. She's clearly a drug dealer. That's obviously (laughs) what the phone is for. Well, it's like a burner phone. (laughs) Yeah. She could be having an affair. Nah, nah, she's a drug dealer. 100%. Great. has a spare phone to do an affair these days. Just, you know, delete your search history. <laughs> All right, Alex. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie to you. I know I shouldn't mention this, but I have to be honest with you. I forgot about the prompt halfway through writing my piece and just completely didn't include it. I just, I wrote the prompt at the top of the document and then instantly forgot what it was. I thought that was going to be a more. I thought that was going to be a more, a more serious revelation. There, I thought you were about to come out with some serious truth. No, the revelation is that I'm a dumbass. Uh, You're not a dumbass, I mean, Bella. Uh, is that a revelation? Oh! <laughs> wow! I think speaking of dumbass, we should go to my lovely piece. Why don't you tell us exactly what your piece is, Izzy? Yeah. So my piece it is a follow-up from my Among Us piece that I did when Matt was on the show. And so, yeah, let's get into it. I basically reimagined Among Us, but into an office environment. Can I just say, you don't know how aggressively angry I still am that you're using Among Us characters, that you're making Among Us fan fiction a recurring theme (laughs) in your work. (laughs) I think it's the best I've got at this point. For those who don't know what Among Us is, it's a video game where you someone is, is pretending to be nice while they actually kill their friends. There we go. I think that's a reasonable summary. Yeah, yeah that's how it works. But this is an office sis, uh, setting, which means there's less murders, but it's no less brutal at all. Okay? You guys all ready? I am. Can I just say also that I, I'm very proud that you guys have come around to adopting the, the art of a recurring character. <laughs> You what do you really? mean adopting? Yes. Like we owe it to you? Yeah, why not? I started it unprompted. <laughs> I mean, we do slightly. You guys just copied my idea because it because it because it was amazing. Right, I guess I'm burning that canvas later. <laughs> You're finishing the job. For reference, that is um, Alex's birthday present. Yeah, that Bella made. Bella, I'm Bella, burning it. I will say, uh, I, w- I will say on the episode, Bella has made me an amazing birthday present. It's a really cool painting, and now she's going to go burn it. Which, you know, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Yeah, I, because I, I, I won't say I don't deserve it. Bella is annoyingly talented at painting and writing, and it's just really not fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like average at both. You're not average at both, Bella. <laughs> no. Right, Venizzi. Do you want to? Let's go. Yes. 
Regressive Among people. Yes. Okay. I don't like compliments. Please continue with your piece. <laughs> the office is bright yellow, as a banana buddy office should be. Marketing campaigns are scribbled on whiteboards, such as the most appealing fruit-based product in town. Go bananas for banana buddy. Roses are red. Banana buddies are cool. Go buy one now, you apple-eating fool. Amber sits at her desk and gazes out of the window and sighs. Balancing two coffees, Cole pushes the door open using his behind and puts them on the desk next to Amber's. Drink up. Not thirsty. Come on, it'll wake you up. Cole looks to the door, then wheels his wheelie chair over to Amber. Is this about drinks tonight? You don't have to come if you've changed your mind. No, no, it's okay. I just had the strangest dream about you last night. About all of us. Oh? We were on this spaceship doing tasks. Lavender had her head ripped off in front of her daughter, so we threw us all out of the ship because he was acting sus. Then you kissed me. Cole stands up and punches the air. Ooh, yeah. Another passenger across the coal train. Choo-choo! Then you pushed your tongue through the back of my mouth and out the other end of my skull. Cole sits back down. Ah. Trust dream me to kill the moon. Yeah. And then Cyan, well, he was being Cyan. The door slams open. Cyan surfs in on a wheelie chair wearing an aubergine suit. He launches party poppers into the abyss. One year without being fired, baby! Not an achievement when you're the boss's son. Eh, what are my favourite interns just talking about? (laughs) Cole and Amber shuffle away from each other as if there's absolutely nothing going on between them. So subtle. We were just chatting about our weekend, sir. Oh, yeah, uh, because we definitely never see each other outside of work, as that would be unprofessional. Um, So we have plenty to catch up on a Monday morning, sir. That's what I like to hear from egos. Professional. Cyan removes the chicken from his aubergine costume and lets it fly freely out of the window. How are our figures doing? Our Instagram reach has tanked. Sitting on his desk, Cyan throws the dice at a printer. Four. It's time for a banana and ketchup, Kevin. Please, no. The Das have spoken. Cyan grabs a stack of post-it notes and plays with them. Starbucks to go in one hand, daughter in the other, Lavender enters. She pushes the party pop of vomit off of her desk with baby wipes and sits down. Are you allowed to bring your kid in? Are you allowed to hook up with a co-worker? Sweet. I'm bringing in my gecko tomorrow. Lavender logs into her computer while balancing her daughter on her knee. Science sticks post-it notes on the window so that they spell out dumb. The marketers get to work typing and scribbling their banana ketchup strategy. I say they get to work. Cyan obviously does nothing but spam banana buddy based memes to their followers while Lavender archives them. Anyone got a pen? Mine just ran out. <laughs> Emergency meeting! <laughs> really? I have a spare pen. Cyan makes a wailing noise and runs to the whiteboard holding a whiteboard pen. You know the drill. Whale. Vito, Vito, Vito. Oh, come on, guys. Not just me. Vito, <laughs> Vito. <laughs> no, no, it's funny if it's just there. <laughs> the others turn their chairs to face him. Okay, guys. What is our pen plentifying strategy? Lambda hands her daughter to Cole, takes the whiteboard pen, and pushes Cyan into his chair. Okay, people. Let's get to the real problem. Banana Buddy is failing. People don't want it. No one even knows what it actually is. Meanwhile, Apple Amigo is thriving. Every time we come up with a new strategy, they get that hours before us. So which one of you is working for them? The door bursts open and falls off of its hinges. A fool stands in the frame, wearing his cowboy attire. Hola, mon ami. What even is his accent? Don't question it. Sorry, Azul, but this is a private meeting. Models are supposed to wait in the hall. Fine. If you don't want my help, that is good. Help? How can you help? I can help find you in pasta, mon fraline. How did you know we have one? Yeah, you'd only come in once a week. I see little. I know all. What am I thinking about right now? If E equals MC squared. Why is Winstable still alive? Damn, this guy's good. Amber's computer pings. The co-workers crowd around it, then gasp. Apple Amigo have launched their apple and ketchup campaign. They stole my genie. I think that was stolen a long time ago, sir. If I may say, monsieur, 
I took the liberty of examining yesterday's CCTV. And... Science dice hit the desk. Lavender, you're fired. But, but I have... I have a daughter to feed. The dice have spoken. Lavender sobs as she packs up the photos of her family on her desk. Don't cry, Mummy. Don't let the mean aubergine upset you. Mother and daughter embrace. Throw me to my blue bro. I cut you off there. Do continue. As I was saying, Cole and Amber were lingering here after Oras. Impossible. I gave her a lift home at five. Yeah, I wasn't hanging around. Maybe as always seeing things. Plus I'd never hang out with Cole after hours anyway, obviously. Yeah, super unprofessional. No. No. <laughs> Why did you do this to me? <laughs> No, senor. I swear on my life you were having the relations with a woman with a blonde ponytail. Amber scrapes her hair back. It's a few centimetres too short to form a ponytail. She glares at Cole. Why does Amber look like she's about to decapitate Cole? Has he been stealing the PG tips again? <gasps> that was you? Why are you still here? I fired you. Bite me! Cole's the imposter. Why? I had a dream about it. That's not evidence. Well, it's good enough for me. You're far too. What? I haven't leaked anything to Apple Amigo. I'm a banana buddy through and through. Look. Cole rolls up his sleeve and reveals his tattoo of a banana buddy with Cause every little thing's gonna be all right written below. I hate you. <laughs> oh, that's what a banana buddy looks like. I thought it was more of a banana rep type thing. No, it's a... Uh... Why are you still here? Get out! Exit a sobbing coal. Azul, you want a promotion? Ho sognato questo giorno per molte lune. Yeah, sounds like a yes. Why don't you help Amber and I come up with our next campaign? Cyan, Azul and Amber huddle around the whiteboard once more. Lavender's daughter sucks her thumb and takes a nap on the desk. I think our campaign should be centred around reasons why Cole makes terrible coffee. Azul, your thoughts? No. We need to send out a clear message to Los Gente about what the banana body actually does. Cyan nods. With her bag finally full, Lavender storms out of the room. Um, aren't you forgetting something? Where's my mummy? Cyan, Amber and Azul stare at her. It's chill. We have lost property for a reason. Amber's computer pings. She runs to check it then hurls a roll of banana-shaped sellotape across the room. Dear amigos of Apple Amigo, today we're releasing details of what our product actually does. Take your Apple Amigo, rub it on an apple three times, and stand back and watch its newfound shine. But remember, a holographic apple is a happy apple which is a healthy apple. Adios. It appears there is still an imposter among us. Science dice hit the desk. <laughs> well, guess I'm fired. See you later, alligators. Cyan approaches the window. Cockle doodle do! He jumps out of the window, landing on the chicken. The pair fly off into the sunset. Amber and Azul stare each other down. So it's you. You're the imposter. It's okay, you can admit it. I don't get paid enough to care. No! You know we are low. Then who? The pair slowly turn their heads towards Lavender's daughter. She unzips her baby grow, revealing an Apple Amigo uniform underneath. But you're a baby! I'm 34! Yeah. She's literally been an adult this entire time. How did you not notice? Why didn't you say anything? Say anything? She has visible wrinkles. Hey, until now I was going to offer you a job at Apple Amigos, but I'll take it. Deal. Let me take you to your office. The pair exit, leaving Azul alone on stage. He takes his cowboy hat off his head and cradles it. E Azul trova il suo vuoto vuoto di nuovo solo, da solo sempre. Perché un modello è solo una pedina per i ricci con cui giocare? <laughs> is he, what is this? <laughs> what, what is what this madness? This podcast? <laughs> I can't believe you made me read Italian in that stupid accent. And you can tell you've used Google Translate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, that's why I gave you the character, because you can speak Italian, so I thought you'd at least have a hope at it. <laughs> Why didn't you ask Bella to write the dialogue? And now Azul's <laughs> emptiness is empty. <laughs> Do you want to translate that last line of dialogue, can you? I mean, it gobbledygook? it's like something about him now being hollow inside and he's alone and he's always alone because models 
I mean, something about the rich playing with models. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah. And then also the I've been waiting for this opportunity for many moons. It's like, <laughs> no one says that. You know what, Bella? <laughs> I, don't so think, says that. I don't think anybody says a lot of the stuff that was in that story. <laughs> yeah, what was the chicken about? He pulls a chicken out and throws it out the window. Like, what was the chicken for? He just I has have, a chicken. I have questions, and I don't think there are many answers. I think my, my favourite line that I did was the why. <laughs> like, the, the why, but with the H in front of it. That, that I don't was know where great. That accent came from either. It just felt right. It's like a combination of Spanish and French and, 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 and something. Yeah. Weird. And I also <laughs> love the American cyan. I think that's great. I had to stop <laughs> looking at the. Still here. I had to stop looking at the cameras because Alex's <laughs> smile kept making me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, could I just? So these characters were originally in a in another piece in my previous Among Us piece, and well, cyan was based on Matt. But can I just say for poor Matt, cyan is no longer based on Matt <laughs> anymore. Cyan is based on an exaggeration of the first piece. And also the reason why Azul switches voices now is because in the first piece I played Azul and I changed his accent halfway through. So I thought, ah, I'll make that a character trait. Right. That's what I was going for. I was going for a similar version of the accent you did, but more mysterious and gravelly yeah. and it's really hurt my throat. Oh, good thing we did this story first, then, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've just made you all completely unable to continue. Oh, I've got to go now, continue. guys. See you later. <laughs> yeah, bye, Bella. Nice Hello. having you on podcast. We now go over to Bella's piece. Can't. She's, she's gone. So, my piece that has nothing to do with the prompt at all. <laughs> it's... Just chuck it in, randomly. The audience don't There's know. There's a phone. Yeah. Somewhere. Someone has a phone. Yeah, somewhere on the ship. Yeah, in a drawer. Okay. Yeah, somewhere on the pirate ship, there's a there's a phone. Alex, you know about ship parts. Where is is there like a proper name for a kitchen ship? Uh, a kitchen, I guess. Uh, well, it could be called a mess mess canteen. Does how does Alex know ship? Parts? Because he runs a pirate D and D campaign. <laughs> I was assuming that I'm a ship expert uh... by the fact that I run a pirate Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I am see, I, I, am see, I right? I get that now. I guess it would be called a mess, like it would be on a normal ship. Yeah, yeah, M- mess hall, like on Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. Had to get that reference in well, there somewhere. This isn't based in the mess hall, this is based on the deck. Because mm. they capture a siren. Ooh, I love sirens. So, let us begin this pirate piece. Mm-hmm. You're pretty unappealing for a siren. She scrunched up her nose and spat a stream of cold seawater into Junimo's smug face. Nin bent at the waist laughing, slapping one of her leather garbed thighs. I don't exist for your eyes, pirate, said the siren as Junimo worked at scrubbing the salt from his eyes. Contrary to popular belief, we're not all ethereal temptresses. I like her, Nin snorted, dropping into a crouch. She reached out to poke at a scale on the siren's exposed stomach, only to be slapped away. What's your name, scamp? She bared her jagged teeth threateningly, but seeing Nin's unwavering smirk, shrunk back down with a hiss. Marnie, she said, glaring at Junimo's raised eyebrow. Used to have an aunt called Marnie. He blinked his bloodshot eyes wistfully and then gave her an impish wink. Ugly trollop she was. Marnie's pale, spotted skin seemed to ripple something silver, her matted hair sprouting gleaming waves, her eyes softening into something bright and seductive. As quickly as the moment came, it passed, and she dug her green claws into the damp deck of the ship. Enough games, she said, scowling darkly. What are your intentions with me, Captain? Oh, he's not the Captain, snarked Nin, picking at her nails with the point of a small dagger. Jew isn't even first mate. Don't remind me, he grumbled, scuffing his boots. Marnie peered at them both, one of the barnacles on her forehead beginning to peel away. The net she had become tangled in earlier that morning began to feel more barbed, more claustrophobic. If you're not the Captain, she said slowly, then who is? I am. The voice came from the stern and leant cross-armed in the glass-paned doorway of the captain's cabin. They wore a slick black girdle over a sea-blue tunic, laced tight enough at the back to give them a feminine waistline. Their dark, flared trousers slit down the sides to show off a pair of tall, steel-tipped boots. They wore their hair loose and their hat tilted, their pale eyes circled in a rich blue paint. And they had a gun. Several of them, all hooked on the silver-buckled belt, kinched at their hips. The water on Marnie's skin went cold as they approached, 
Nin and Junimo parting for them to tower over the beached sea creature. Mercury, they said, voice sharp and frigid. Captain Mercury. When they smiled, Marnie flickered silver again, instinctively raising her beautiful defence. My, my, Mercury said as the siren slipped back into her rotting flesh. Aren't you a pretty little thing? Bella, are they going to kill my character? Ooh. No, because in other universes, they're friends. Hmm. Mm. I reckon they take the siren on board. Yeah, I assume that they take the siren on board. I had I had Mercury be the captain this time. I, d I don't know why, I just felt like they would be the most responsible of the group, whereas Nin and Junimo mm. would just kind of... I feel like Nin is first mate and Junimo is just at the bottom of the pile. Mm. Wow. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> All right, I get it. To think Mercury had like the highest status in the other pieces, so it makes sense that they would be appointed captain. And I reckon they'd be a really good, respected captain as well. Well, yeah, because in the uh, in the swamp horror piece, they were the one who extracted the leech, and Nin sort of was like the one that went out and got the supplies, and then Mercury was like, "Have you got it?" And is all like, "Oh, and Mercury looks after Marnie." Mm, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think Mercury's got a soft spot. Yeah, I feel like Mercury would um, would not kill Marnie. Mercury would take Marnie in. Mm. I really like Mercury. I think they might be my favorite. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Nin's my favorite. I just love Nin's just sort of, yeah, like the ruthlessness and just yeah. not really caring. Like, I do like Nin as well. <laughs> yeah, she's picking, like I was, that was kind of a flashback to the other piece where she's missing three fingers. <laughs> Clearly she's quite <laughs> reckless with her hands because she's just picking her nails with a dagger. Yeah, that's why I love Nin. Also, I love the line in that piece of, and they had a gun. I love how sort of casual you said it as well, as if that's not even the first thing people would notice when looking at Mercury. It appears to be quite a striking figure, so I, I, I'm guessing the weaponry would come second to the overall look. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do have a very bold appearance, I feel. Hmm, wonderful. No, I was a big fan of that. Very nice description Sorry it was so short. No, it was nice. I loved it. Short and sweet. Nice to have the con shaft. Speaking of short and sweet... Where, where were you Aaron going with the segue? Erin is not short, <laughs> but she is sweet. Erin is not short, but she is sweet. I was going to say, like, I just realised neither of the two people left a reader short. So I was just like, <laughs> wait. I am I'm the second tallest one here, and I'm very proud of it. Unlike me, who is yeah. short but not sweet. You are very sweet, Bella. Aw, that's Sometimes. nice, Erin. I don't think Alex would agree. <laughs> I've, I've been on the receiving end of t too many comments. I feel like we just bully Alex every time he comes on this podcast. That's all right. He's I, such I an easy target, back. though. <gasps> wow. <Yes. laughs> he takes it well. I'll give you that, Alex. You take it well. Wait till my fans hear about this. <laughs> We'll have an army. The Heelys will gather, all wearing Heelys as well, and they'll, they'll skate towards Heelys. you, Izzy. Like and a wave of... roll forward with an unstoppable momentum. Yes. Okay, I can roll a skate. I have roller skates, I can roll a skate, so I'll be fine in that You'll hear them Roller skates trump Heelys. <laughs> Alex, I don't, I don't have roller skates. Please have mercy. <laughs> you think I can roller skate? I can yeah. barely walk. You'll be sleeping in your bed at night. Thinking yeah. you're safe, and then wee, 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 and you'll be like, no, my god, it's the Heelys, and then they'll burst down the hill <laughs> in through the front door, <laughs> and they'll say, excuse me, how dare you talk to Alex like that? Alex is my favourite <laughs> oh guest on all of Prompted, and personally, I Why think you're being Heelys really mean to like him. Why do the Heelys sound like that? Because... Why do the Heelys sound like that? I don't discriminate based on voice. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, anybody can be a fan, even if they sound like that. Even as well. <laughs> even as well. Wonderful. Um, so, we'll go to Erin's piece then, after there's, that. There's no segueing this one. Take it away, is he? An empty house. Outside, an ambulance drives past, sirens wailing. We hear the crunch of gravel, a key turn in a lock. We can faintly hear Shay's voice on the other side of the door before it swings open and the sound of three people come so in. So we'll definitely find it in here. <sighs> Should we be doing this? She gave me a key before she disappeared. Wasn't that for when you were feeding her cat? You still have that? I just haven't given it back to her yet. Oh, that was, what, three months ago? That business trip, right? 
You shouldn't still have that. That's, that's kind of creepy. There is a crash as Shay begins to pull drawers out and empty them. Hey! Right, cool it. Stay out of her stuff. I've seen her stuff before. How we look? Shay, are you sure we should be here? If the police find out, it'll mess up the investigation. They haven't found her yet, and they won't. Look in that cupboard. It's a small one. Black. A uh, Nokia, I think. There was some kind of sticker on the back. I don't think... Will you just help me for once? I, I didn't mean it like that. You don't talk to them like that, Shay. I know, but if you just help... Help? You actually have the sheer nerve to say that to me. It'll be here somewhere. It's been two weeks. My sister has been gone for two weeks, and you know what I've done? Every search party, 12-hour shifts in the hope of finding her. Hanging those posters all over town. Calling everyone who ever had a connection to her. And then the police calling me at three in the morning to tell me that her phone's been found in Dover, of all places, with no sign of her. Don't you dare tell me that I haven't helped. You really don't believe me. You think that she'll call her own phone because it's the only number she knows off by heart, yeah? Exactly. <laughs> Looks like all these hours of making conspiracy theories paid off, huh? If she got to a phone, she'd call that number. Hmm. Yeah, and not. I don't know. The police? Vans is right. She'd call the phone. Because? Because she... She told me she kept her old phone. She knows I can find it. She find me. Because she loves you, right? That, that's... I didn't say that. She didn't. She... What? She never thought of you that way. You realise that, right? She'd call the police, not you. Another pause. We hear Lanza opening drawers quietly. Uh, guys? Check this out. We're leaving, Lan. No, 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 look, look. The phone. Give it to me. Keep your grubby paws off. But There's a sound of a brief struggle. A catch! Bo! Sh Shay, will you quit it? The struggle continues. We hear the bleep of the phone as Bo turns on. Man, let them go. Put the phone away, then. There's missed calls. Yesterday. Day before. And the day before. We hear Bo dialing. The phone rings. It connects with a click. Hello? Ooh. Aaron, this has got my heart beating so fast. It's so, like... Tense. Yeah. I love like Bo's character when they say she didn't. It's so like a knife through my heart. <laughs> Shay is a very really weird character. Shay okay. sounds nuts. Yeah, yeah, I think so. They... <laughs> why? Why did she call that phone and not the police? I don't know. Part of the mystery, hopefully. I feel. I feel like no matter mm. how much someone loves you, <laughs> or you love someone, but she you doesn't. Been missing for two weeks. You would call the police, right? I know, but she doesn't love them. Unless she's got something Ooh, to hide. True. It wouldn't be the mystery genre if everything made sense. That's true, that's true. <laughs> Can we get a sequel to this? Because that would be awesome. I just so want to find out what happens. Uh, sure. You'd need to get a good prompt for it. That would be cool. Yeah, I love this piece. I love how you build up tension. I love the relationships between the characters. Especially, you manage to build up relationships between characters that aren't actually there in the scene. So that's really impressive. Erin is very impressive. <laughs> Speaking of things which are impressive, let's move on to the next. <laughs> oh, you're you're setting expectations. <laughs> that was a good segue. Way too that high. That was a good segue. Way too high. That was high. a pretty good segue. <laughs> My segue you. was going to be a lot meaner than that, so I'm glad Erin stepped in. <laughs> See, it's just I just get bullying on this podcast. There's no other word for it. Just bullying. So, Alex, your piece this week, you have kept it very secretive. I asked you whether you were doing a certain piece mm -hmm. over the weekend, and you did not tell me a yes or no answer. Said you'd have to be patient and wait. Yeah, exactly. And then even when I was doing the intro for this episode, you said that I'm not allowed to put what this piece is about because it may spoil the surprise. Because it may spoil the surprise. We'll read the piece and find out. So go on, Alex, surprise us. Alex, would you like to do the honours of reading the title? This is A Very Sensible <laughs> Finale by Alex e. The calm market town of Craven Arms, England, lies just on the southern border of Shropshire Hills area of outstanding natural beauty. Describing itself as the gateway to the marches, the peaceful parish is a frequent visitor destination for those who wish to explore the stunning scenery which surrounds the town on all sides. 
On the short cul-de-sacs of Oaks Road stood the home of Susan Stokes, single mother and recently cleared suspect for the man's daughter of Winstable G. Clutton Howe, at the Ludlow branch of the Clutton Howe Sensible Game Shop. Life for Susan had largely returned to normal following her encounter in the store, but one night in her kitchen, just next to her recently installed granite-topped island, everything was about to change. Jimbo? Yes, Mummy? You have to finish at least one more vegetable before you can get down. But, Mum, I don't like vegetables. I want more smiley faces. Susan sighed a very deep, defeated sigh and took the plate off the table. Fine. I suppose you've at least eaten most of the other things. You can get down. Can I go play Luigi's Mansion now? You can have 20 minutes until we need to give you a bath. Yay! As Jimbo ran out of the room, Susan felt a strange chill descend over the kitchen. As she walked over to check the thermostat, there came a loud knocking at the front door. Confused as to who it may be, she paced slowly up the hallway. Who is it? But there was no response. Then there came a knock at the back door, and the hair stood up on her arms faster than a skinny American leaping from their seat to catch a stray ball at a baseball game. Susan ran to the back door. Hello? Who's out there? There again came no reply, and now Susan was beginning to bead in a nervous sweat. She had a phone in the kitchen drawer for emergencies such as this one, and the frantic middle-class attached homeowner inside of her knew that in a town with a crime rate as low as Craven Arms, this may be her one and only chance to use it, and prove to Carol that this wasn't an utter waste of £29.99 having it installed. She dashed to the drawer, opened it, and to her horror, the phone was already ringing. Her hands were quaking harder than a jelly placed on top of a Jenga tower constructed directly on top of the San Andreas fault line. But she picked up the handheld and answered the call. Who's there? What do you want? I want you to open the door like any sensible person would do when there's a knock. Shocked at the familiarity of the voice, she grabbed a reasonably sized rolling pin from the counter and opened the back door, ready to confront whoever was haunting her. In front of her floated the figure of Winstable G. Clutton Howe, the twice-deceased former owner of the Clutton Howe Sensible Game Shop. To Susan's dismay, she realised she could see straight through Winstable and stood petrified at what he had become. Aha! That wasn't a very sensible move now, was it? Did you just open the door to anybody who knocks in the middle of the evening? I would have thought that you'd have learnt what a terrible move that was from one of those very silly horror movies, like Scream or Paranormal Activity or my personal favourite, Saw 5. Winstable floated through Susan into the kitchen and wore on his translucent face the same <laughs> amount of smugness a man might have had if they had just betic- beaten a particularly beefy Oxford graduate at hardcore chess boxing and then made up with his reasonably attractive girlfriend on a Harley Davidson. You've opened the door for me. That means you've invited me into your house and now I'm free to haunt you. Hang on. Invite you in? I thought you were a ghost, not a vampire. What? No, I'm definitely a vampire. Sir Christopher Lee played Dracula, and I defy you to find a more sensible man than he was. Susan walked over to the enormous fruit bowl, which she had purchased mostly just to intimidate the other members of her maternity support group, and threw a small lemon straight through Winstable. See? You're a ghost. Oh, whatever. The irony of you trying to suck all the fun out of this. You know what? I'm actually flipping chuffed about that. (laughs) Vampires are stupid anyway. They're weak to sunlight, and silver, and fire, and garlic, and running water, and regular water, and sharp pieces of wood. Running into a well-lit suburban kitchen would frankly be tantamount to suicide. Now, now that I am a ghost, there is nothing you can do to stop me, so go on, be scared. Alright, look, what do you want? Revenge! Which, I might add, is a very sensible thing to want after you killed me in my own shop. You attacked me first. It was self-defence. Oh, but it wasn't only that, was it? After my shop got taken over by my arch-nemesis Dunstable, you went back and actually bought something from him, didn't you? It was only one thing. I bought a game for my son. The absolute cheek of you. Go on, then. What game did you get? I bet it was some silly game, like Rocket League or Mario Kart Wii. It's called (laughs) Luigi's Mansion. It's very serious, I swear. Is that so? Well, go on then. Tell me what it involves. Oh, well, I I don't really know. Uh, You'll have to ask Jimbo. Winstable rolled his eyes harder than the bingo wheel in the town hall on Thursday evenings, a silly game which Winstable despised (laughs) almost as much as his seething hatred for Kart against humanity. Oh, of course he's called Jimbo. Why should I expect you to give him a dignified name, like James, or maybe Jason? No, you had to be special, didn't you? 
fine. Let's go ask him what this nonsense game is all about. Winstable stormed straight through the wall into the next door living room, where the young child has his attention glued to the television screen. Right, listen up, you. I demand to know the general plot and premise of your entertainment immediately. <laughs> and another thing. Was it you who was eating those ghastly face-shaped potato snacks <laughs> in the kitchen? What kind of sadistic carnal war criminal do you have to be to enjoy eating the visage of other human beings? Why do they even make them <laughs> smile? It's quite reasonable that if you were pulped and reformed as a child's dinner item, that your expression would look more like something out of an Edward Mulch painting. Mummy, why is Casper shouting? Because I'm not feeling chuffing friendly today. <laughs> now explain your game. Well, you are Luigi, and he gets a big mansion in a letter, and it's very scary. Uh, uh, well, that, that actually sounds quite sensible. No doubt the horror comes from the extortionate in inheritance tax the government gets to take during the handover, and all the additional costs of maintaining and running such a large estate. No, it's scary because it's full of ghosts and puzzles. No, oh, that's nonsense. What? Did Mr. Rubik suddenly grow a fascination for Ouija boards and gift his house to a working class Italian cousin when he stuffed it? <laughs> what kind of a game premise is that? Please tell me that this Luigi fellow does the sensible thing and schedules the house for demolition, providing, of course, that he's checked up with the local council to make sure that it isn't grade listed and that he's filed for the appropriate... No, he sucks the ghosts up with a vacuum cleaner. Wizard of Oz's ghostly village began to glow a very stern shade of red. A vacuum cleaner? Oh, so you can't shoot a ghost or stab one, but you can remove it in the same way that you would a cobweb or a small pile of salt that you've spilled in a freak pasta accident. That's it. I've had enough of this world. It's all stupid. Nothing makes sense. And maybe I'm the only kept alive because fate knows that I'm the only man sane enough in this land of lunatics to understand that the silliest thing of all in life is that we bother trying to live it in the first... Wait, what's that whirring noise? At that moment, Susan burst into the living room, clutching her limited edition blue variant of the Dyson DC-25 multi-core <laughs> vacuum cleaner. Holding, <laughs> oh dear. Holding the nozzle up to Winstable, she watched him cry out in a very dramatic final scream, the likes of which could only be appropriate for the finale of an epic three-part radio saga. Winstable G. Clattenhauer was sucked up into the vacuum cleaner and thrown out with the rest of the rubbish on Tuesday evening. Susan and Jimbo went to Sainsbury's the next day and celebrated with a 454-gram bag of McCain's Potato Smiles, which they purchased for the very sensible price of £1.80 and two bonus points on her club card. <laughs> I love Potato Smiles. Oh my god. The, the end of an era. Um, <laughs> yeah, is that his actual end? I, you, you don't know. Who knows? I mean, you said it's a finale, but what if there's like an epilogue? Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Yeah, or you know. a sequel. A prequel, sorry. Oh, yeah, maybe like an origin story for the rivalry <laughs> between Winstable and Dunstable. That would be amazing. Yes! You know, maybe like they're at school and Dunstable's just the one messing around in my class and Winstable is there just trying to study, trying to be the sensible student, but everyone thinks Dunstable is more popular and eventually it really gets to Winstable and the only the only thing that can get him through is, is board games. Oh no! <laughs> you know, maybe there's like a really dramatic backstory to this. That's so sweet. Does he have any friends to play board games with? Well, well no, that's why he likes the sensible ones, because they usually come with a single player option. Alex, your piece, I loved it. I've never struggled not to laugh so much. How do you think it rates compared to, you know, if we're talking like the the, the, the trilogy here, the, the first part, <laughs> the second part, and the third part, where do you think this, this ranks in the overall hierarchy? I think the second part is the best one, but that's just because I remember it being absolutely, like, I just remember Erin completely losing it right at the very end. <laughs> yes, that was when Erin forgot how to read. I just yeah. forget how to read. <laughs> I love the mm, fact that sure. he. I just love the fact that he sucked up with a vacuum cleaner. And Alex, I love your comparisons, just of everything. That's that's what my favourite thing yes. is. Like, how can I make some ridiculous comparison? I think the one about the Oxford graduate is my favourite. <laughs> it was reasonably attractive girlfriend. <laughs> Yes, that was hilarious. Oh, well, thank I, you. I don't even know what to say about that piece at all, but it, it was brilliant. I liked Jimbo being called a sadistic carnal war criminal for eating the vice of other human beings. 
and I'm literally talking in the voice like, oh, mummy, and he gets called like a carnal war criminal <laughs> for eating potato smileys. Which oh, doesn't go half some these kind of things. Yeah. I'm glad everybody enjoyed. It's quite reasonable that if you were pulped and reformed as a child's dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know what? Maybe I'll surprise everybody if I, you know, if, if I ever get invited back. Maybe I'll surprise everybody next time by actually writing a, a genuine serious piece. And all no, of you're, sitting this there is thinking, it. You're, you're... Am, I, am I typecast now? You're not typecast. <laughs> That's fine. I've completed the trilogy. I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to go into the wilderness yeah. now. I'm really sorry to interrupt, but I really need a wee, and if I don't go now, I will piss myself. So I'm, I'll just be two minutes. Is, is that, is that, is that, okay. should we just end the episode there? Like, should that just be it? Thank you so much to all of our writers on today's show for writing brilliant pieces. And thank you so much to everyone for listening. And also a special thanks to Alex for joining us today, his fourth time on the show. Thank you. No worries. And this episode is all about how to write silliness in writing, how to write silly characters. To support us, subscribe to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash promptedwritingpodcast for bonus content and shout outs. And our YouTube, which is Prompted Writing Podcast. Be sure to comment and like on our YouTube as well to help us out. And make sure to leave us a review if you're on a podcast platform to tell us what you think. For more prompts on writing, find us on Instagram on at Prompted Writing Podcast. Thank you so much again to everyone for listening and to all you guys for writing. Bella, hit the outro. Mm-hmm.